Hello everyone, this is Connor from futuresanalytica.com. We're continuing our series of using our order flow trading algorithm to turn $500 into $10,000, where at the end of the series, we'll be donating that $10,000 to World Vision. We're gonna be trading the strategy we highlighted in our last video, which is based on equity research published by currently employed traders at top investment banks around the globe. Our strategy is based on unusual asymmetrical order flow imbalances and market entropy. If you're interested in learning how to use this strategy and seeing exactly why this strategy works, I have a video linked on the screen right now. The market has just opened. However, as you can see, the bars prior to the opening are very high entropy. We're waiting to turn on the strategy until we see it exit this zone, which will be signaled by price crossing the green line just below where price is sitting at currently. So after a couple minutes, price dips below our green line, so we turn on the strategy. Just as we do that, a huge imbalance quickly comes in and we're automatically entered. From here on out, we're going to continuously keep the strategy enabled until we see an increase in entropy. We got filled on that trade really, really quickly, leading to our first win of the day, just over $115 a profit. Shortly after that, we get our second trade, which is quickly filled for another winning position. Like we said, we're leaving the strategy on. However, this time it takes a bit longer for us to get filled into another position. So we miss out on a nice little short move. If you're a trader who wants to take advantage of every big price movement and try to predict every top and bottom, this strategy is not for you. We are not even attempting to predict where price is going. We are simply utilizing inherent flaws in the microstructure of the market to take advantage of the small bits of forecastable volatility that happen during the journey of wherever price is going in the future, which once again, we are not claiming to be able to predict or are trying to predict in the first place. We don't care about these huge swings up or down, we just want a small share of the pie to grow our account consistently over time. So here is our third and fourth entry of the day, which happen back to back and are filled very quickly. And repeating the same simple process as before, we're gonna be leaving the strategy on. You may have noticed that these trades often happen in clusters, with consecutive trades happening very quickly back to back, with a relatively long gap in between each trade group. This is for good reason. You're witnessing the strategy only entering when it detects the presence of big money scaling in or out of position. And we're taking our cut of the profit by riding the wave of the price move that will always happen when that much money flows in or out of the market. So there is our fifth and sixth entry of the day. Our sixth entry takes a lot longer to get filled and we're also seeing price approach that red support line automatically marked by our system. This leads us to not rearm the strategy as our trade gets filled. Also, if you haven't noticed already, our account balance tracker was not on the screen until now. We forgot to enable it on our recording software. I'm super sorry for this. As this was recorded in real time, I make mistakes too when prepping for a trading day. So we noticed that and re-added it to the top right-hand corner of the screen. We've now pushed our initial $500 account all the way up to just a bit under $4,000 in only a few days. If you wanna watch the rest of this series, there is a link to the playlist in the description, as well as on the screen. After that last move, we've just been observing what the market has been telling us and waiting for a good condition to turn the strategy back on. We may have made a small blunder by turning off the strategy, as price actually did push through that red support level. However, shortly following that, we observe a bounce off of the bottom edge of a reverse strength channel. We're going to play it safe here and only arm it in the long direction. Using this level of intervention in the strategy is not required. However, I consider myself an advanced user, so I personally prefer to have more control over my trades we get our seventh and eighth trade of the day here, with our eighth leading to a six tick loss. It's important to stay level-headed after a singular loss and not let it take away our aggression when using this strategy. Price is now near the center of our channel, so instead of just rearming long, we're going to go back to full auto and arm in both directions. And now we are back to the waiting game, looking for some sort of trade entry, completely missing out on the very straightforward long move here, which can be difficult to watch, but patience is a very important skill to learn when using a strategy such as this. To make matters even more frustrating, no trade is picked up on a consecutive quick short leg. And even after that, where another long leg forms with no trades being taken. I think I can speak for all of us using polarity that no matter your experience level, it will always be frustrating looking for an entry that does not come when you want it to. But this is just the nature of trading this way and it's like this for a reason. I will gladly take the trade-off of missing those legs if I'm getting consistent small scalps. But 
on a new bar formation, we get a triple short imbalance right at the top of that bar, which enters us into a short trade, finally. We end up getting filled and our profit for the day is now at our high goal of $1,000 on the day. I am very over leveraged for the sake of completing this challenge quickly, and I can afford to lose the money I have at stake here. If you're trading with a similar account size, I do not recommend using three contract like I was in this video. I would start with a much smaller amount or trading MES until you get to a sizable amount you're comfortable moving over to ES with. With this, we have concluded our Monday session and we do not trade the small account again until the following Tuesday, which you will now be seeing, along with probably one of the biggest trading blunders I have ever made, which I hope you get a little bit of a chuckle out of. Now, moving on to day two with some pre-market footage. This is the origin of the mistake that cost me over $1,500 of profit on this account. We've been experimenting a little bit with building an entropy sweep, an auxiliary system you would have to the side which can help you use polarity more effectively. And you're seeing one of the first completed components of this here, which are entropy-based bars. You're also seeing the regular built-in NinjaTrader trade detector, which comes by default with their lifetime license plan was to wait for a big block order and place one trade at open with a tight stop and tight take profit. However, it did not play out this way. Not only did we not have the correct account selected, we did not have an ATM strategy selected either. And since NinjaTrader account and ATM strategy selection is synced in the same chart window, along with the fact that we had to reset our workspace during the last week, leading us to incorrectly set up our account data window, this was a perfect storm for a big loss. However, we don't even notice that until the end of the trading day. So back to our unaware selves, we are looking at a low entropy market open with a high entropy zone at the previous level above the green reverse strength band. So at the open, we arm in both directions in normal mode. At the market open, we get an easy trade entry followed by a quick win. Sticking to our routine, we are going to keep the strategy armed in both directions. But even with the opening volatility, no consecutive fill happens for a while. But here we're seeing the market start to follow the lead of what happened at this level previously, transitioning to a high entropy market condition. This all happens very quickly, but when we get that first fill, we keep it armed in both directions, but now we're in regression mode. Instead of just disabling the strategy completely in a high entropy zone, I'm demonstrating a way to still make money in these areas. We're just going to do the same thing we always do, but with the strategy in regression mode instead of trend. And what I'm doing with those yellow vertical bands you might be seeing on the screen is I'm making a basic visual indication of bars that have a delta divergence. A very long string of winning trades happens very quickly, which is somewhat common in regression mode. We're automatically capturing high probability regressive price action in this usage type. If you looked at this string of bars without knowing about the strategy, I think you and I could both agree that trying to trade this open would be an absolute nightmare if we were following a traditional TA based strategy. But for us, these types of zones are insanely profitable. In the first two and a half minutes of the market open, we made almost $1,000 with eight wins and one loss, with another two wins happening shortly afterward while the market is still transitioning. This is why I love this type of high frequency scalping. It reveals so many trading opportunities that before would have been unthinkable. So now we are just over $1,000 of profit with 10 wins and one loss in just four minutes. We saw price dip outside of the red support line. So we're either going to call it for the day if it stays out or try and get a few more regression trades if it re-enters that high entropy area. However, the delta price correlation holds strong, along with price dipping back outside of the entropy zone. So we end up calling it with $1,100 of profit. But here we check on NQ, thinking we'd already been either pulled out of the trade with either a defined win or a loss. However, we immediately notice this is definitely not the case, and we hit our panic button and, on and close that position for a $1,400 loss on this tiny account, bringing us all the way down to a $386 loss in the day, wiping out all of that profit and some more. Super demoralizing and I was pretty upset for the rest of the day about this mistake. Always double check before trading and never leave a position unattended. But we can't dwell on that and we're simply going to have to live with our mistakes and move on to the next trading day. 
So here we're looking at pre-market. Super similar opening zone to the previous day's session, with the open being at the same level as a prior high entropy zone. So that means we're going to be in regression mode at the open and arming it in both directions. As more and more orders start to pour in at the open, we get our first trade. And as we do that, we are obviously going to be using the same process as before and continuously keep the algorithm in full auto configuration in both directions. For the opening volatility, we capture three winning trades in a row, bringing our total for the day up to about $400. And from here on out, we're going to keep repeating the process. Entropy was so high during that whole zone that it is practically impossible for there to be a straight moonshot move for trend mode to be effective, even after pushing above the green resistance boundary. And after two winning trades, price has now failed to re-enter its high entropy zone, with two strong divergences back to back in this area. So we're switching over to trend to try and take advantage of any potential snappy feedback after the buildup of those two divergences which there is. We got a small amount of movement there above our green channel line for a quick winning scalp. But now Delta has collapsed to the negative side, so price has now failed to secure footing for an actual move, prompting us to switch it back to regression. Upon doing so, we get a final winning trade inside of that zone, bringing our total gain for the day to almost $1,000. And to recap in this episode, we have traded this account for three days and have gone from $3,100 all the way to $5,300, which I'd say is a very substantial amount of cash for such a small period of time. Anyway, I just wanna thank all of you guys for 10,000 subscribers. This channel has grown so much from where we started and I'm so excited to see what comes next. If you guys enjoyed this content or have any suggestions for what to trade next, it would mean so much if you subscribed and left a comment. Thank you guys for everything and happy trading.